happening and welcome to buzzlocal.tv. We are most pleased to have the new mayor of Moncton has that new mayor aura about her, Mayor Don Arnold. Welcome, Don. Thank you, Eric. It's <laughs> great to be here. <laughs> Good. Very glad to have you. So last week you were in Toronto I for was. a very special event. What was that? Yeah, last Thursday and Friday I was at the World Future City Summit in, right. in Toronto and it was an amazing experience to see where we're going, where where the future of cities, smart cities, intelligent communities is going. So, so what's the what's is there a trend with the big cities? Well, for or sure, city summits, I guess, and urbanization. Well, uh, one one topic that was big for sure was that the idea of the autonomous car and what what the implications of that are. Uh, as well, something called the Internet of Things, which basically just means that there are. Um, machines talking to machines and collecting all this data on us and that's great but what are we going to do with all of it how can we use that data to make our world a better place so that's what an intelligent community is it's something that that it's a community that is using that to become more efficient more effective in in the way that they do business well you had mentioned that uh, a city in India for example 30 mm -hmm. million people as a big city uh, you know can leap ahead yeah. of others because of, of the technology of So you of think of India, I mean, they're famous for having terrible governance and 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 you know, not being very efficient and and not having good infrastructure in place. But if you took a city like that that's maybe, you know, got some serious serious issues and all of a sudden put some cash there to get the proper infrastructure in place and and to get them on board they can leapfrog ahead really, really quickly, or at least that's what they're they're hoping for. That's what they're project, projecting. So um, that will be really interesting to see. But at the same time, some of us in North America that have sort of the legacy infrastructures in place, you know, it's a little bit more challenging sometimes. In some ways, if they can do this effectively in India, they can leapfrog ahead of all of us very, very quickly. Wow. You had mentioned a little previously a, a very interesting stat that I hadn't heard of about downloads. Yeah, apparently uh, <laughs> Moncton is the top place for uploads and downloads in all of Canada, wow. which is pretty interesting. But what I was found really interesting at this, this conference was a, the surrounding area of Toronto. There was a, a woman there from a city just outside of Toronto they don't have the connectivity that we have. They don't have the fiber op, the the broadband that we in New Brunswick, we just take that for granted because we've had it for such a long time. But uh, th that's not a given everywhere. So the fact that we have it, that we've been able to use it so well, um, and the fact that we are on this sort of uh, fiber superhighway, we are a direct uh, link to Hibernia, which runs under the Atlantic Ocean, direct to Europe. We we're very well positioned to be able to to lead um, as a, a from a big data perspective. So, so for me to go to a conference like that, it was a great opportunity to to see what the future might hold and how we might be able to access that and use it to move Moncton forward. Well, now moving Moncton forward, I mean that's uh, in the next four years or so. There's there's a lot that's going to change. I mean just globally, mm -hmm. right? If you want to talk mm -hmm. about the climate, if you want to talk about Food prices, all kinds of things. Uh, food security. Uh, where does Munkin stand, like in those things? Like, do you, th you think that we can use this data, this information, to kind of help us uh, figure out where Munkin needs to be in the next four years or so, or even even longer? Oh, I, I I truly believe it. I think that by by looking at real measurements and being able to assess those and see where our gaps are, see where our opportunities are too. You know, who knew that we were the number one upload download city in all yeah, of Canada? Right. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty interesting information, you know. Right. So of how there is free Wi Fi at Tim Horton, so there could be And a, on our bus. So there could be you <laughs> and a bus, yeah. So there could be kind of a correlation there, I'm not sure. But uh anyway, because we have the most Tim Hortons per capita too, I believe. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe there is the connection there. So what uh, well, for you then, what in the next uh, four or five years? Now, obviously, there's there's the downtown center. That's a massive project. Mm -hmm. But what do you foresee? Is there anything you'd say? You know what? I'd really like to kind of see this this happen. Well, I'm pretty passionate about downtown development. Obviously, we've made a huge investment in the downtown center, but 
bookending that is Downing Plaza and I'm lucky enough to be able to see the progress on that. It's coming along very nicely and I see that as a real opportunity to provide a conduit to our river. For many years we have turned our back on our river. It's something beautiful, it's something unique in the world. We are sitting in a UNESCO biosphere right here in Moncton. I think we need to celebrate that. So by creating this beautiful conduit, which will be very pedestrian friendly down to down to our river, which will also slope down to our river to provide a natural amphitheater for events like concerts on Canada Day, and that sort of thing. Nice. We'll have that, we'll have the downtown center bookending that. I'm all about how do we create that density in between? How do we create a vibrant and dynamic city in between those two bookends and already you're seeing it happen we've put some incentives in place the Tuttle Brothers uh, funeral home for example at Lutz and Maine I really encourage people to drop by that building they did a fabulous job that's I mean, great the former it used to be the Tuttle Brothers <laughs> funeral say, home it yeah. is no longer no, yeah, okay, there, yeah. uh, there are a bunch of different businesses in right, there right, right. beautiful job yeah. um, and then there's uh, right beside the Capitol Theater uh, there's a wonderful new uh, old building that is being revitalized uh, it's got a new boutique in there style boutique on Main Street they're doing extremely well which I'm happy about because I feel like I kind of bullied them to moving <laughs> to, to Main Street yeah. but they're having great success a couple weekends ago the uh, Hockey Canada was in town and and um, a lot of the, the people that were participating were staying at the Delta Beau Sejour. And a lot of the spouses went over to Style Boutique and said, wow, this is fantastic. So it's one of the best weekends they've had from a sales perspective ever. So nice. if we can get more people to see the value and uh, of being in our downtown, I think that would go a long way. Because to make a, a downtown vibrant and dynamic, you need people living there, you need people working there. and people playing there so once we can get that triumvirate uh, yeah, right, uh, going yeah. I think I, I think we're going to be really well positioned is there a is there a, a tangible number for a critical mass like to have that perpetuating like I know at the uh, Greater Moncton International Airport they have if you have so many passengers a day that's kind of the number to mm -hmm keep things going on its own to have perpetual motions there yeah that's a great question we haven't done it from that perspective but when you think of our downtown core uh, it's it represents about 1.5 percent of the entire geography of our entire city and yet just that downtown core right now brings in 14.4 percent of all tax revenues and yet and yet 47 percent of it is surface parking which is a terrible use of land and a terrible use from a tax perspective because we get virtually nothing for a, for a surface parking lot. So if we can transform that f some of that 47% surface parking into other higher and better uses, such as a multi-level parking garage or retail, commercial, residential, that will go a long way to, to bringing in more tax revenue, which helps the entire city. Right, uh, that's true. Well, it's been a real pleasure having you in this morning. I thank you very much. And uh, But as new mayor, is there I mean, have you, do people bow now to you uh, at the stores or anything? Or they call you Empress of Moncton? Or what's what's the title? Because uh, it was Mr. Mayor. Are you Mrs. Mayor? Are it's you, Dawn. It just, oh. I'm good with Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Not Empress Dawn or just, yep. just Dawn? Dawn's just good. Dawn. Dawn's good. Well, thank you so much for coming in. And uh, we look forward to more reports from you uh, in the future here in Buzz Local. Thank you, Eric. Eric Jingles with Mayor Dawn Arnold of Moncton. And uh, thanks for watching and tune in again soon. Thanks. Anytime.